This man rescued crying wolf cubs and their dying mama wolf. What happened after will shock you. One early morning, John was walking back to his cabin after a tiring few days of prospecting. Then he was suddenly stopped in his tracks by a piercing howl of agony that tore through the atmosphere. He put his camping gear down and walked slowly closer to peek through the brush. There, in the clearing, was a massive Alaskan timber wolf. Imagine coming across a huge animal like this, one that easily weighs a hundred pounds. Its legs seemed to be caught in a trap, and it was trying to get free. But then it seemed to give up and lay down again. The wolf looked tired, as if it had lost all hope. John was shocked to discover the wolf. He wanted to help the animal, but when he got closer, it got spooked and tried to pull on the chains, growling, and its hair stood up. But it seemed to be more out of fear than real anger. John backed off because he didn't want it to injure itself. But before he did, he saw something he didn't expect. It was clearly a female wolf, but that wasn't the surprising part. Its teeth were full of milk. Somewhere, there were babies that needed to eat. If they were still alive, nursing puppies can't survive without their mother for very long. If John wanted to reunite the puppies with their mother, he'd have to act fast. But there was no way John was going to risk being close enough to the wolf to free her, at least not without getting his arm chewed off in the process. The wolf seemed very weak, almost dying. In fact, it seemed she had lost a lot of blood from the injury on her leg. If she was left to suffer like this, she would surely die. But John wasn't about to let it come to that. With everything he had been through, he had become the kind of person who never gave up, and he wasn't about to give up on this dying mama wolf too. He realized that every second he wasted could mean that either this mama wolf or one of her babies didn't make it. He had to move now. Undecided about how to get the wolf's leg out of the trap without getting injured himself, John realized the wolf just lay there without moving. She had fought so hard to get out of the trap, but now the pain and blood loss had caught up with her. Time had run out. He had to get her out of the trap now and tend to her injuries. Carefully, he touched her paw, but she didn't respond. She was completely out of it. It was now or never. John grabbed his sleeping bag, threw it over her head, and slowly pulled it over her entire body. Hopefully, it would at least keep her confined until he could get the trap off her leg and run for safety. He then pushed the button on the trap to release it, but it wouldn't budge. It was stuck. It looked like it had bent when the she-wolf had tried to escape. John needed to get her loose, or she would die. He grabbed a rock and smacked the trap's release button. He kept hitting it until it sprung open. Then he wrapped up the wolf entirely in the sleeping bag and started running towards his cabin as fast as he could. While her it wasn't easy, John was a strong man. Within 50 minutes, he was at his cabin. He laid the wolf down next to the fireplace. She was very cold. The fire was already built, and John could just light it when the house warmed up. He could check out the wolf's injuries. He reached for his first aid kit, cleaned the wound, and stitched it up. John had some medical training and knew exactly what to do. Her leg was also broken, and he needed to straighten it by putting it in a splint to keep it still. If he had waited any longer, she would have surely lost the leg. Now he only hoped that he was in time to save her life too. She slowly started to show signs of life, but then John gave her a sedative. The first time she growled at him again was the first time he knew that she was going to be okay. She needed him to help her, but she didn't want him to get too close. Knowing she would eventually wake up, John decided to move her out of the cabin and into a shed where he kept her. She wouldn't be able to move quickly with the splint on her leg. After checking on the mama wolf, who was looking better, he set out to find the puppies. But where could John even start to find a den of wolf cubs? He grabbed a bag and a flashlight and went off to search. They couldn't be too far since a wolf won't wander too far from her babies. He was only visiting Alaska before he had to join the Second World War as a medic, but he had plenty of survival and tracking skills. 
He was going to need to use all the skills he could muster to save those babies. Without his help, those babies were as good as dead. He searched up and down the area, looking for prints, and finally got a break. The tracks led him in the direction she had come from. It was a place to start. He walked up the mountain as quickly as he possibly could, but he had to make sure that he didn't miss signs of a den. It could spell disaster for the tiny wolves who were waiting for John to rescue them. He walked quickly, but something caught his eye, and he came back. It was hidden, but there was an opening to a hole in the ground. Hopefully, this was the den he had been searching for. Now the only problem was getting the wolf puppies to come out. They were trained to stay inside until they heard their mother, even if staying inside could mean their death. John was determined to give it his best shot. He tried his best wolf call, but nothing happened. He tried again, but still nothing. He was contemplating the dangers of trying to go into the den when suddenly a little, tiny wolf came out. It was crying from hunger. It was probably one of the main reasons that it was willing to risk coming out without hearing its mother's voice. After the first baby came out, the others soon followed. They were small, but they were still little wolves. Knowing that he could never carry all four, he placed them all carefully in the bag and closed it up. They were safe inside, but he had to check if any other cubs remained in the den. It is never a good idea to stick your head into a wolf den with only a flashlight for protection, but thinking that he might have left one behind was unacceptable. He had to check. The hair on the back of his neck stood up as he lay flat on his stomach and crawled inside. Thankfully, it wasn't as deep as he had imagined, but it was still dark and it smelled like fear. With his light, he could see inside, and no other wolves remained. He could leave the area with a clean conscience, knowing no puppies were left behind. He grabbed the bag of pups and went back to their mother. It felt super surreal carrying a bag of wolf puppies. She must have heard their tiny whimpers as they were approaching because she started to howl. Carefully, he set the puppies down and let them into the shed one by one, hoping that his smell on the pups didn't cause the mother to reject them. If she didn't accept them, finding them would mean nothing. The puppies recognized their mother, and they all ran straight towards her. She sniffed them, and for a moment, John held his breath. Would she know them? The rugged outdoorsman got emotional when she started licking the pups. She laid down, and soon all the puppies were happily drinking. Her whole body seemed to relax, but her leg was still badly injured. John would have to figure out a way to get her out of the trap, or she might lose her leg. A wild wolf without a leg was pretty much guaranteed to be a dead wolf, and along with her, her puppies wouldn't survive either. However, there were more pressing matters to attend to. The wolf had been trapped for a while, and she had to be hungry and thirsty. Now she was feeding her babies, and that would dehydrate her even more. For now, he had to bring what she needed to her. He knew of a spot where some hunters would put meat in the ice. They called it, nature's cold storage, and everyone was fine with someone else taking what they needed. Feeding a wolf might not have been what they had in mind, but this was an emergency. He sliced off a big chunk of meat and threw it piece by piece at the hungry timber wolf. She might not have trusted him, but she was happy to take the food he was providing. She didn't have much choice. He also put water in a food bowl and pushed it closer with a stick. At least she wasn't growling with every move he made anymore, and John would take that as progress. But as soon as he tried to get closer to check out her leg, she would try to bite. Still. John and the wolf both had a really full day and needed rest. To get her to trust him, he put his sleeping bag as close to the wolf as he could without her being able to reach him. He would prefer not to wake up to a wolf gnawing at his arm. It took a while to fall asleep, but the pups had no such issues. Most of them curled up with their mom, but the little girl that first came to him laid next to John and fell asleep there. At least someone fully trusted him. The next morning, he woke up with a bunch of wolf puppies playing over him. It wasn't a bad way to wake up, but things would quickly take a shocking turn. John had to go out to get fish to feed the wolves and firewood every day, 
and he left his door open for the wolf pups to come and go as they pleased. But he didn't expect them to invite friends over to visit. However, that seems to be what happened one day. As John came back, he got a big shock. His yard was filled with a whole pack of wolves. They had come to check up on the she-wolf. This must have been her family that had been searching for the wolf and her cubs. But walking into a pack of wolves in his backyard was not something he was prepared for. It froze John in fear for a second. The puppies came running to him, happy as can be to see their friend. But the big wolves all turned and started to growl and stood with the hair on the backs of their necks raised. It looked like they were ready to attack. Then suddenly, one of the wolves gave a loud bark. It was the she-wolf that John had helped. As soon as she barked, all of the other wolves backed down. They seemed to relax completely. But John wasn't planning on hanging around and visiting with a pack of wolves. He got out of there fast, going into the cabin and closing the door. The she-wolf still couldn't stand on her leg yet, and she still had the splint on, so he was glad to see that the wolf and her pup stuck around. After just a few more days, John could see that she was feeling better. He didn't know how he was going to remove the splint, but she fixed that by chewing through it herself. She could walk again. In time, she would even be able to run again. In the morning, she barked at the puppies, and they all got up and followed her. John understood that they were leaving for good. He wondered if he would ever see them again, but he would see them much sooner than expected. He was just sitting down to sulk when there was a movement at his door. The she-wolf barked at him. She wanted him to follow her. It didn't seem real, but they had gotten close through her trauma. Even if he had no idea where she wanted him to go, John picked up his rifle and followed the wolf. The puppies played around his legs while they walked. They climbed the mountain that was close by. It wasn't long before they reached a flat area and the rest of the wolf pack suddenly approached them. It freaked John out, but they showed no interest in him. They were too busy welcoming the she-wolf and her babies. He moved away quickly, and from a safer distance, he just watched. It was incredible to see them interacting in such a beautiful place. It was as if the mama wolf wanted to show John that her family was not going to hurt him. It was a peaceful moment, one of the last peaceful moments that he would remember for a very long time. But now that they had reunited with their pack, it was time to leave them for good. He still started walking down the mountain but then turned around. The she-wolf was watching him go. He didn't know why, but he raised his hand to greet her, and she started howling as if to say goodbye. Her puppies came to stand next to her, and when he gave a final glance towards the wolves, they were gone. It was a bittersweet moment. After that, John stayed in Alaska for a while, but nothing lived up to the experience he had had with the wolves. Plus, he knew he had to go home. He had been cut off and in a happy bubble, but horror awaited him at home. It was time to face it. He went home but wasn't there long before he had to join the war and serve. What followed was some of the worst experiences of his life. Fighting in the war was as far from the tranquil beauty of Alaska as one could get. He lost many friends and had to do things that he would try to forget for years, things he never believed he was capable of. It was a living nightmare every day, and it felt like death was at their door. And one day, he got much closer than he ever expected. They were attacked from all sides. All he could think about was how much more humane the wolves had been than this brutal war. A grenade was launched at the group. The last image he thought of before everything went black was of the blue skies over Alaska and a wolf howling as if she was calling him. Then, he didn't know anything else. John woke up in the hospital. His body was on fire from the pain, but he was very lucky. Another group of soldiers was close enough to assist them, or they would have all perished in the fight. As it was, he had lost two friends and had sustained serious injuries. His leg was hurt, and he was severely concussed. He would not be going back to war, but he wouldn't be going home right away either. First, he would need to get treatment for his leg and get back to health. It took him months, and then he was finally home. 
but everything felt too closed off. He was longing for something more. The sound of the wolf's howl stayed with him. As soon as he was strong enough, he was off to Alaska. It was a place where he could heal his heart or make a choice about his future. He had to choose if he still wanted one. He rented the same cabin where he lived before. The first day, he went walking. He wasn't sure what he was searching for, but it was like something was drawing him to the area. He went to the spot where he first met the she-wolf. There, he had saved her when she was dying, and with her, he had saved her cubs. Now he was back. What happened next will shock you. He walked up the mountain to the place where he last stood, looking at them and saying goodbye. There, he cried for the first time. After all the horror he had seen in the war, he felt like the world was over. He didn't want to live. He sat with a rifle in his hand. Then suddenly, all the air left his body. A wolf came over the ridge and stood watching him. It was a she-wolf, just as she did before. She started howling. It looked like she also recognized him. Then suddenly, four younger wolves came and stood next to her. The puppies had all grown up. Seeing what John had saved helped to heal the scars of the things that he went through during the war, at least a little bit. It gave him a reason for living through the darkness that had come over him. He had saved all of them, but now they had helped to save him too. He could hold on to that piece of goodness for the rest of his life. When the darkness wanted to overwhelm him, the memory of one of the most special encounters that he could ever have. One night, when David met a giant wolf with a letter in his mouth in the middle of the highway, he thought he was hallucinating. But when he read the shocking content of the letter, he took immediate action. A man named David was driving along the highway on a starry night when he found something in the way. He parked his car a few feet away when he saw something that had frozen his blood, a wolf sitting in the middle of the road, staring at him with sharp eyes. David was about to start the car again and run in the opposite direction when he found a letter in the wolf's mouth. Just then, he thought he was hallucinating. A wolf bites a letter. What can he do in the middle of the road? Well, if he's going crazy, he might as well go all out. David plucked up all his courage, jumped out of the car and approached the wolf slowly. The beast bowed his head and threw the letter at the stranger's feet. Just then, David learned a shocking thing, involving a man named Boris and a terrible situation. Boris is a veteran with a sad story. He was sent to fight in Afghanistan. At first, he was extremely proud of his country's service. He felt that he was part of something greater than himself. Unfortunately, his wife disagreed with him. When he was first deployed, they were newlyweds and their first child was about to be born. The whole situation was quite overwhelming for her. So, when Boris returned after his first deployment, still physically intact, she begged him to leave the army. Their daughter, Alenka, is now one year old and she cannot be cared for alone. Boris didn't want to retire, so he went back for a second deployment. This time, however, he was not so lucky. Tragedies happen in more than one way. He has been conducting routine inspections of their designated areas when someone missed the improvised explosive device. Boris only remembers loud noises and flashes. When he woke up, he found himself in the hospital, missing a leg. The other was badly injured, with some shrapnel embedded in some places. This means that he always risks infection in some way. As soon as the news reached home, the second tragedy happened. Boris has been trying to reach his wife for several days, but without success. Until he got a call from his mother. She carefully told him that his wife was missing and left Alenka in her care. When his wife learned of his tragedy, she was at a loss and realized that she could not take care of him like a child. Boris was shocked at the news that his wife had left him. Now, he not only has to face the disability, but also has to take care of his daughter alone. He knew he needed to get back to her as soon as possible. The poor child has been through too much. Alenka was ecstatic to see her father. He is her hero in every way, which will only strengthen Boris's determination to become a better father. 
He and his daughter lived with their mother for several years, but he soon realized that the city was not the place for his daughter to grow up. He wanted her to enjoy the outdoor activities freely, so the father and daughter packed up what they had and set off to live in a small village in the mountains. From day one, Boris knew he had made the right decision. Alenka was happy for all the spaces where she could run and play in the garden. Boris found a warm cabin on the outskirts of the village and accompanied her to school every day. Their life went on gracefully in this small village. Boris opened up a small piece of land for himself and his daughter, and everyone seemed to welcome them. The only problem Boris has to face is that his daughter is lonely. In an ideal world, he would have more children with his wife, and his daughter would have brothers and sisters, but unfortunately, it was not meant to be. But Alenka found a simple solution to the problem, she just wanted a dog. This is not a complicated requirement, but it brings back painful memories of Boris. He trained a dog when he was in the army, and when he died, he felt very depressed. He wasn't ready for another puppy, so he refused to let his daughter enjoy the luxury. He didn't want to see her as heartbroken as he was. However, fate has other plans for the father and daughter. A little soul appeared on their way when they least expected it. One Sunday, when they were walking once a week, they heard a cry. They walked towards the sound and found something amazing. On the track in front of them, there was a small ball of grey fur. Alenka ran over before Boris stopped her. She picked it up and took it back to her father. In her arms, she was the youngest wolf cub he had ever seen. Alenka walked home with her new friend without saying a word. Boris could see her love for the lovely little animal and felt that he could not separate her from it. But it wasn't long before the wolf began to grow exponentially. Alenka called him Sergei, and they were inseparable. He followed her wherever she went. In some ways, this completely reassured Boris because he knew that there was a big wolf by her side and that she would always be safe. He spent a lot of time training him, and with his intelligence, he was very confident that the training would last, but he didn't realize how important it would soon become to him. Every day, Sergei trotted into town at the same time to accompany Alenka home from school. The ceremony also helped Boris a lot because he didn't have to work on crutches every day. One day, however, when Sergei arrived at Alenka's school, she immediately realized that something was wrong. Sergei seemed very nervous and anxious. He jumped around her, moaning as if there was something wrong with him. She didn't understand what the problem was until she got home. Her father lay in bed, pale. When she entered his room, he had little energy to meet her. Alenka has seen him in this state before. His leg must be infected, which means he is in urgent need of medicine. She first confirmed that his fever was not too high, and then quickly went to the city. There, she asked everywhere for help, but no one could provide what she needed. So she went home and asked her father what to do. He asked her that the fever would go down and that it would get better soon. However, he was so wrong. As the hours passed, Boris's consciousness seemed to disappear more frequently, and Alenka began to panic. She splashed him with cold water and finally woke him up. After sleeping for a few hours, he weakly beckoned for a piece of paper and a pen. He wrote something on the paper and folded it up. Then he told Alenka to go to the highway to stop anyone driving by. If they are kind-hearted, they will help. But before she could do anything, Sergei did something unexpected. He bit the letter with his mouth and walked quickly towards the highway. There, he met a kind stranger named David, who was reading the letter with trembling hands. He could have put it back at the wolf's feet and left, but fortunately, he did not hesitate to help. David jumped back into his car and walked to the village. He drove straight to Boris's house and helped Alenka get him in the car. Then he went to the hospital to provide Boris with the treatment he needed. If it hadn't been for Alenka's beloved pet wolf, her father would not have survived the night. Sergei repaid their kindness by saving him and participating in the rescue work. This must be an event that none of them will forget soon, and it is also an amazing expression of loyalty and love.